YouTube, what's up? Back again for another daily fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. I'm glad y'all enjoyed yesterday's video, going through that old tackle box, finding those really old topwater baits. I'm going to have another old bait segment because there are so many additional baits in there, and not just topwaters, crankbaits and other things. So, But today, though, I'm going to dive into a topic that I've never talked about on this channel, and that's fishing a tube. And I'm not talking about flipping a tube. I'm talking about fishing a tube for smallmouth and show you how to fish a tube for largemouth that maybe you did not know. Um, but hey, real fast though, if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, I really would appreciate it if you did. And also, if you could like this video, that would help me out tremendously. So just hit that little thumbs up, or even thumbs down if you didn't like it, but I think you'll like this video. So hit that thumbs up if you do. But let's go ahead and dive into it. I'm not gonna do like a little break or anything. We're just gonna go ahead and dive right on into this deal. But fishing a tube, uh, you know, in the sense of what people think is, you know, especially down south, they think flipping a tube. So, don't get me wrong, flipping a tube is still one of the very best ways to catch pressured fish. But there's also a few other ways to catch fish on a tube that maybe you haven't thought of. So, that's what we're going to talk about today. So, here I have a three and a half inch coffee tube. Now, these things are absolutely covered in salt. So, you know, don't get me wrong, I want the salt on there, but I don't want too much salt because it's hard to handle and all that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of other really great tubes out there. I just throw a coffee tube. Um, it works really well. The deal is, guys, like, I, and I fall victim to this sometimes too, is we try to overcomplicate things. So a three and a half inch tube is basically going to cover everything you're going to want to do for the two techniques that I'm going to be talking about. So if you're a smallmouth guy, this is stuff you've heard before. You've fished a tube your entire life. And so, am I going to tell you something different? Probably. So, that's the deal. You know, we always, when, when you look at tournaments, like the St. Lawrence River is literally going on today. They're catching a lot of fish. Actually, I saw a lot of them catching them on hair jigs, which I might do a video on hair jigs later, but not right now. But, uh... I'm almost thinking that the tube is starting to be somewhat forgotten. Now, granted, a lot of you northern guys, y'all hadn't forgotten the tube. You still fish it, but has the net rig kind of taken over some of that glory? Absolutely. I feel like there's more people fishing a net rig now than there are fishing a tube in tournaments. Now, the local guys, they're still going to be out there dragging tubes and doing their deal and catching fish and all that, but the net rig definitely has... Uh, dampened the amount of people that actually use the tube. So, but on the tube, for all you guys that haven't gone up there, the basic rigging method on that is to get like an insider head like this. This is just a tour grade um, uh, tube head, uh, five sixteenth in size, and and they range in size, and that and that can be very complicated for some. Is trying to pick the right size tube head. So basically, this was taught to me by a really good friend of mine mine uh, named Mike up at St. Clair a long time ago. Uh, but one of the big tricks is the clearer the water, the lighter the head, or the calmer it is, the lighter the head. And as it gets windy, cloudy, and stuff like that, that's when you actually increase your size of your jig head, or at least that's what I've always done. Uh, because the deal is a small mouth are sight feeders. They like to be able to visually see everything if it falls really, really fast in front of them, they might not eat it. So the slower the fall sometimes is better actually for smallmouth. But in the case of dragging the tube, fishing those current related situations, you gotta throw a heavier one. So a five sixteens, half ounce, even the three quarter ounce tube head is sometimes needed to catch those smallmouth depending on the amount of current that you're dealing with. But basically all you do is you wet that lead a little bit and you stick that tube head inside the tube all the way and then just let the, the eye of the hook actually poke out the to top. So that's the basic tube rig. Now, is this going to catch you fish? Absolutely. Is there ways to make this better? Yeah, I, absolutely there is. Uh, one way that you can make it better is it's a very simple method, but actually adding scent to the back end of the tube. You know, where... The tube actually makes the tube uh, actually add scent in there. You can add crawfish scent. You can add goby scent. There's scent for literally everything. Scent is one of the most overlooked aspects when it comes to fishing anyway. But seeing that smallmouth, especially smallmouth, are sight feeders and 
They, they have a great sense of smell. Even adding a rattle to this. You know, they have rattling tube heads that work really, really well. But doing a few of those little modifications can go a really long ways. Another little trick is to take your fingernail and actually scrape the side of your tube. It's going to fluff it up some. It's going to actually take some more salt out the side. And that's going to even get you even more bites. I, I know it sounds crazy, but it actually works. Um, you rough that tube up a bit and you'll get even more bites on it. Another thing is you can add a little bit of dye to it. A dip and dye. I personally don't add a lot of dip and dye. Uh, but just once again, it's more of a scent thing for me. I just want that garlic scent or some type of scent on my tube almost at all times. The cool thing is with the coffee tubes, they already come with coffee scent. But even then, I still add way more. And even some situations, I'll get like some uh, gulp attractant or the coffee scent attractant. And I'll actually put it in the bag, zip the bag up, rub it together, and let it sit for a long period of time. And that'll get that thing, it'll soak in all that additional scent. And man, like when you pull it out, it's just like slimy and gooey. And like, you don't even think a fish is going to eat it, but they eat it immediately. Uh, when it comes to fishing the offshore tube for smallmouth, you know, line size, everybody gets on this big, uh, and I do sometimes too. Like I get really caught up on what size line I need to be fishing, six pound, five pound, seven pound, eight pound, whatever. When it comes to fishing a tube, I fish like 10 pound test. Um, especially for hard fighting smallmouth, you really, I'm not saying you don't have to have six pound line and there are certain situations that six pound line is hundred percent going to get you more and bigger bites than 10. But in the case of a tube and catching big smallmouth, 10 pound line will actually get it done. So I'm going braid to 10 pound line, uh, a pro TI rod, seven foot medium action. You just need a medium action rod. You don't have to have anything that breaks the bank or anything that's crazy. 7 foot medium, a 300 size reel and 10 pound braid typically gets the job done for me. A 10 to 14 foot leader on the fluorocarbon. Um, but now I'm going to show you a way to rig your tube for a largemouth that maybe you haven't done before. And, and maybe you have. Maybe you've seen it on TV or maybe you didn't even know how to actually do it. But you get your tube out, your 3.5 inch tube. You can use a double dip. These are called double dip tubes. Or you can use single dip, it doesn't really matter. And then you get the Secret Lures Stupid Tube Head. Now, I was shown this by Jacob Wheeler a really long time ago. I want to say he won the All-American on this rig. And uh, used, I use the only one I ever use on this is the 8th ounce 4 aught. So I think they have a 3 aught version, but I like a little bit bigger gap in my hook. And the 8th ounce just gives me the right fall rate. So what... The big deal about the stupid tube, what it does is it'll actually twirl that bait down. Now, in some situations, people are going to say that the, the Ned Rig will be better, and maybe you're right. But to this day, I still keep a pack of stupid tubes in my boat, literally, or the stupid tube heads in my boat all the time, because you just never know when you're going to need one. So, so I've got my, my three and a half inch coffee tube here, and this is the tube head. So if you look at the difference in tube heads, You've got this one, which would be like the, the Great Lakes type tube head. The round hook, the flat eye. Let me set this tube down so you can see better. But this is the different version. So this is the one that you throw up north. And this is the one that I'm going to throw around cover down here. And even up there too. I've caught them on it up there. But around cover, this is the one I'm going to use. It's a big wide gap hook. And you can see the difference in the hook uh, there. But so what you do is you take your tube like this one. And you you enter the bottom of the tube. So here's the top of the tube. Here's the bottom of the tube where the skirt is. You go in the bottom of the tube with the hook, just like so. And you come out about, a, I don't know, about a half inch down the tube body. You see how my hook's pointing out here? Okay. And then you take this tube. You, you pull the jig head up to where it stops. So now it's stopped right there. And you actually just twirl it that way. You poke out the eye, and then you re-enter the tube from the bottom, just like so, and you text expose it, just like that. And you want to make sure it's straight, you want to make sure it's in the middle of the body. But this rig right here is virtually weedless at this point. You can skip this tube around boat docks, you can skip it around um, walkways, 
grass, timber. You literally can fish this thing in and around just about everything. If you're getting really heavy stuff, I just laid that hook on there just like that and pull it up. But if you're getting really heavy stuff, you can even expose it just a bit. Uh, but that'll actually make that thing virtually weedless. You can literally fish this thing around everything. So if you're dealing with a big bluegill bite or maybe everyone in the tournament is throwing a shaky head or a net rig, you can pick up this stupid tube and you can catch a lot of additional fish. Once again, 10 pound line tends to be my go-to with this because A, I gotta set the hook a bit harder and uh, B, I'm typically fishing around cover. So I don't really wanna fish that super, super light line. In this situation, I'll still throw that seven foot medium, but I will tighten my drag down a bit more because you really do have to set the hook. Um, because the deal is, especially if you have to rehook it, you've got to be able to drive that hook home. But that's a lot of times why I leave it just pushed up against there because when they bite down on it, they're typically hooked pretty good. Um, you will lose some more on this because it's not 100%, you know, like the open hook tube version. But when you get in situations where you don't have that option, this is definitely one of those tubes that you need to have tied on. As far as colors go, I keep it pretty basic, guys. Um, like a, a Gobi, we have one called Gobi Licious that has like a purple bottom or like a light, a light white purple bottom with a green pumpkin top. I throw green pumpkin. I throw this one here too. I think this one's called Dark Melon Gobi, which you can't go wrong with like a copper and purple flake up north. And even down here, this is a great color option as well. Guys, I hope you learned a little bit about fishing a tube in this particular video and understand the fall rates and a few different methods of rigging this thing that'll help you catch more fish the next time you're on the water. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that sub button and like the video if you can. That would help me out greatly. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.